Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to on today's episode. WWE might be bringing back Brock Lesnar. Brian Danielson talks about his time at WWE Creative. And Will Ospreay talks AEW's much better contract off of bruv. Plus, we're going to be answering your questions and previewing tonight's AEW Big Business for Big Dummies. Sorry, whenever I say big business, I just think big dummies. It, just, it springs to mind, I suppose. Yeah. It does. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start with this, Larson. So it seems like WWE might be, or at least forces within WWE. I wonder who that would be. <laughs> uh, Want to bring back Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So Brock Lesnar has been scrubbed from WWE since he was uh, referenced in a lawsuit filed against Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and the WWE. But could he be coming back soon? During a recent Wrestling Observer Live Brian Alvarez mentioned that there could be some moves being made to bring Brock back. And these transcripts come to you via WrestlingNews.co. He said this. In the last few days, there have been moves regarding Brock Lesnar. If you listen to the show last night with Dave Meltzer, everything we talked about is accurate other than the roster page. So uh, a quick bit. There was uh, uh, rumors going around that he had, that Brock was taken off the roster page on WWE.com and put back on, but apparently he was never removed to begin with. Okay. Uh, there are movements to bring him back. I should add regarding Brock. I'm not saying he's going to be back. I have no idea if he's going to be back. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring him back, but I can tell you that there have been inquiries made and what that means. We will wait and see. It seems like a bad idea to me. Put it that way. It is a bad idea. It's a End terrible, quote. It's a terrible idea. This is one idea. of the few times I think I can say that I totally agree with the Wrestling Observer Padawan, Brian Alvarez. It's a terrible idea to bring him back. Like, dude, I'll be honest with you. Talking about the lawsuit stuff as it pertains to Brock Lesnar is, in for me, kind of tricky because, like, I'm not, I didn't read the ins and outs of it. I understand the allegations that were made towards Brock Lesnar Still, that being said, like I, I, I feel uncomfortable discussing that necessarily. Yeah. Speaking strictly from a perspective of the WWE creative, when Seth Rollins references The Rock, for example, in character, saying, we don't need you. We, like, we're moving on from that. They have moved on from Brock Lesnar. I understand what they think they accomplished with Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, giving Cody Rhodes the Brock Lesnar rub, I understand within wrestling means something. Mm -hmm. It kind of doesn't mean shit to me. And I've been Same. watching for like 30 years now. Same. I just don't see the point. The thing about the thing about Brock Lesnar, one, one thing about Brock Lesnar is that you've always heard that Brock Lesnar will do what Brock Lesnar wants to do. Yes. It's like his, you know, it's basically his show. They bring events, brought him in, and Brock would just sort of, you know, what do you want to do, Brock? Exactly. You know, Brock comes in and wins the Rumble. Brock comes in and wins Money in the Bank. Brock yes. comes in. Yes. If he, yeah, yeah. What they're constructing now at WWE when it comes to the stories they're telling, it seems to be an atmosphere of collaborative freedom that didn't seem to exist before. They're telling the stories they want to tell with a with an emphasis on long term booking, and even if they stumble along the way, yeah, like I personally feel like they're sort of wishy washy with what to do with Damian Priest, yeah, you know, yes, very much so. That being said, that's going to happen with most creative endeavors when they're as sprawling as they are in wrestling. Well, and also you, when you have a, a pretty vast writing staff, well, all with their own styles and storytelling yeah, techniques right. they like to employ, there's it's harder to get a uniform. Even if it is all filtered through Triple H, yeah, a uniform voice when you have so many different voices yeah. writing the product. Yeah, too. Brock Lesnar just does nothing for me creatively. It's like, okay, I get you bring him in to give somebody else the Brock rub, but like, like I guess the the idea was he was supposed to have Gunther at WrestleMania. Gunther yeah. wins that match, um, and I I know I get that that like does it gives Gunther the Brock rub, but. I don't need that for Gunther to be as successful as he is in my eyes. I yeah. just, I don't see what value he brings anymore. Maybe they believe that, hey, Brock Lesnar is still a marquee name, just like they thought Ronda Rousey was a marquee name. To me, personally, 
The marquee names are the guys that are there every week I know. mixing it up. What, I just don't see the value. What draws me to the product is, and even this, this is kind of historically speaking, what draws me to the product more than anything is interesting stories. Yeah. You know, I understand the value and, 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 and the importance of, of star power. Mm-hmm, yeah. But if the stories are lacking, my interest in the product is not going to be as great as it would be if the stories are good. Yeah. From a storyline perspective, Brock Lesnar has not done anything interesting for a very long time. No, he has not. Most of his matches are kind of of the copy and paste variety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And and from a creative standpoint, especially right now when creatively the company is seemingly hitting on all cylinders when you've got some intriguing stories going into WrestleMania this year and they seem to be focusing on the storytelling and the stories being built to WrestleMania during the show. There's a possible, several possibilities of having some interesting, really dramatic moments happen at WrestleMania because they're setting up the stories uh, in a way that that would be possible. To then say, all right, we're going to bring Brock in and let him be Brock Lesnar and let him do what he wants is going to potentially ruin the dynamic they've created, at least for WrestleMania and the flow of the show. If he comes in and is like, I want to take on this person. Well, this person is booked for this. I don't care. Yeah. Right. You know, if, if, if he's brought in with the same amount of stroke leverage power that he was prior, then you kind of, to a certain degree, have to take your, your, your plans, whatever you wrote down, ball them up and try to throw him in that mug over there on your desk yeah, because yeah, right, he could yeah. throw everything into disarray at this juncture when The Rock's on the show, when you got some good stories. There's a possibility that CM Punk, even though not in a wrestling capacity, could show up. Mm. I, I, I personally don't see the value in bringing him in from a creative standpoint, from the standpoint of, of, of what's involved in the lawsuit as well. Yeah. There's, it's all see. It's for me as a, 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 a fan of the product, as someone who talks about the product. It's I see all downside. Yeah, right. Yeah, all downside. There's yeah. not a whole lot of upside. You already got a, a huge star-studded WrestleMania. Yeah. Like what? The Rock's gonna? Or sorry, Brock's gonna draw more than The Rock? No. I know. Yeah. yeah. You got The Rock. You got Logan Paul. You got two huge mainstream names are already gonna be involved in the show. Yeah. You don't need Brock. You yeah. don't need him. It's yeah. a terrible idea. No, I'm not, I'm not a fan of the idea either. I wonder if it's because, you know, I had this question on like a Russell Juice thing, I think the other day. Somebody asked, you know, how is Paul Heyman going to handle the Brock Lesnar thing? It's it's my belief. It's And this is my pure speculation. Paul Heyman seems like the kind of guy he's going to want to reference Brock Lesnar. I mean, their careers are so intertwined. Yeah. It's difficult for him not to. But Paul Heyman seems like the kind of guy who just wants to do what he wants to do also. And granted, when it comes to like the creative of Roman Reigns, I think Paul Heyman is probably very useful because he's a good storyteller. He has yeah. a good mind for the for the yeah. drama. Yeah. But there is that dichotomy of also, he's going to want to go in there and talk about Brock Lesnar and have his back. Well, here's another thing to consider is Paul Heyman's getting inducted to WWE Hall of Fame this year. And so much of his WWE career has been intertwined with Brock Lesnar. I'm sorry. That's that's the context with which okay. I was talking okay. about. Okay. Yeah. Um, He's going to want to be up there referencing him, thanking him, putting him yeah. over. Yes. Regardless of what happened in the lawsuit. Yes. Um, that's yeah, that's that's going to be likely the, the situation. And. Yeah, who, I, it's, it, who knows how it's going to unfold if. The company stay in, stands firm and says, no, we're not bringing it back. We don't want to reference them. And At got, least not in any sort of detail. Here's also kind of the thing about this, too, is that you can't discount. And again, this is my own pure speculation. Paul Heyman has been known to go to the dirt sheets, to leak out stuff to the dirt sheets. Or that's that's been the that's been the accusation that I have seen. Can't say he's been known to do this. That's the accusation I have seen that he is no stranger to using dirt sheets to manipulate, you know, to, to try and manipulate, you know, situations. Wouldn't shock me if the forces within WWE are just Paul Heyman, you know, and he's putting this out there because, you know, people, we've known a lot of wrestlers and people in, you know, the wrestling circles do this. They yep. try to get their stories out there. It's never through going in raw, by the way. They never give it to yeah, us. It's probably, it's probably for the best. <laughs> probably for the best. I don't want to get in trouble. Man, I'd stress out so much if we got information. It's like, oh, man, is this, do you think we, do we, this is something worth talking about? Got to go in and raw exclusive. 
<laughs> and then within 10 minutes of doing the podcast, everybody's like, no, that's not possible. <laughs> you yeah, guys, I know. That would be the thing. Yeah. You guys are fools for believing yeah, this. Yeah, we're a bunch of idiots Reporting on this like it's fact. No, I, I, I couldn't handle the stress of, of, of trying to break news. I no, couldn't handle that. I wouldn't want to do that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, regard, like, so it wouldn't shock me if this was just like Paul, you know? But I don't know. Maybe it's more people. Maybe there's another. Maybe there's a bigger push. You know, although they're all linked. You know, like I'm sure. I don't know. I'm sure Ari Emanuel is probably a Brock Lesnar fan. That's just my suspicion. But at the same time, wouldn't you want anything and everything, even even remotely linked to activities in that lawsuit, out of the company? Yeah, absolutely. I would think absolutely. that that's what they would want. Just absolutely. To wash their hands of it completely. And I mean, I, and granted, I'm no lawyer. There could be, a, 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 from a legal perspective, they might kind of have to if there's an ongoing lawsuit and people have either named or referenced in the lawsuit. They might not want to feature them on their product for whatever reason. I don't know. It I'm might just, bite them in the ass in a major way. It could. Yeah. So, you know, it, it from that perspective, they might just be like, we can't have Brock on TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. who knows? Who knows? It's it's obviously an unfolding situation. Hopefully, hopefully they don't bring him back. I just have no desire to see him. No. There's there's too much stuff. There's too much. There's been too much reporting on over the years, over the decades, about how Brock Lesnar behaves backstage. And I I want what I want is a is a cohesive creative vision yes. presented for my viewing pleasure. And Brock Lesnar from all from all accounts ain't really that. Nope. Nope. Anyways. Nope. Uh, let's talk about this. Brian Danielson. Let's talk about Brian Danielson. We like Brian Danielson. Here I love Brian Danielson. He's he, great. He, he can go wherever he wants as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'm always happy to see him on my TV. I'm happy to see him on my television, too. So he was at South by Southwest. That's a, 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 it's a direction. It is, but it's also like a festival in Austin, Texas. That's Steve. right. That's what that is, too. So he, uh, I guess, was on a panel or something. And he talked about his time at WWE Creative and a, a, a request that Vince McMahon had of him one day, and this is what he had to say. These transcripts come in from Russell Pierce. Quote, Vince McMahon actually called me one night. I was part of WB Creative, and he called me one night and said, what is AEW doing that we're not doing? <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> so Danielson continued, I went back and watched eight straight weeks of TV within the span of six days, and I was like, there's a whole list of things. What are they doing that we're not doing? Uh, no, no, you can't do it. Sorry, I advise you not to do it. I can tell you what you can and can't do. I advise you not to do it, Steve. God damn it. What are they doing that we're not? I'm sorry in this case. I got to do it because this fucking old man calls poor Brian Danielson in the middle of the You know what shit oh, was in the like middle of the night? Three in the morning, he I know. He says, call me one night. Yeah, one night, one night in the middle of the night. I know, 3 a.m. He was probably getting his good sleep in. <laughs> okay, Vince. I'll pop in some VHS tapes of AEW. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, and man. I, I don't know if he mentioned what around what year this was. I guess it would have to be, well, be 2020 at some point. Probably 2020, yeah. You know, and who knows how much uh, exposure Brian Daniels had had to AEW to that point. But what if this is spe- wild speculation here? Through watching that eight weeks of television, you oh, know, yeah. Danielson's contract was running out. He's like, good Lord, it's a fucking utopia over there. It's like, wow, they actually focus on wrestling. I want to go there and have great matches on a weekly basis. Vince McMahon inadvertently drove Brian Danielson away to AEW to the yep. competition. Yep. Um, I had him do this research for him. So, like, yeah, uh, th- this is it. It Honestly, it just go. <sighs> it just th- this this one sentence alone just goes to show how out of touch Vince McMahon is and was in his last like 10 years of booking stuff. Cause he just didn't get it because back then AEW they were doing the shit that WWE wasn't doing that WWE is doing now. Yeah. Just an emphasis on attention to detail when it comes to your storytelling, you know, that's just the top of the tip of the iceberg right there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I thought that one quote was just so hilarious that you know the arrogance of Vince McMahon and being humbled, looking at that, being like, "Oh man, we we don't we have zero buzz. What are we doing? What are we doing wrong?" Yeah. Well, where to start? Where to like? How do you not see it? I know. But well, here's the thing. I'm guessing that Vince never actually watched any of AEW's product. Just heard of the name AEW and saw they were probably beating NXT in the ratings. Like ah. 
Look, I'm doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> I advise you to do it. <laughs> no. Who is this company and why are they why are they why are they beating my company my 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 developmental promotion in the ratings? We're WB, we should defeat everybody. And rather than having himself mm -hmm. go and pop it a VHS tape or two, he calls up Brian Danielson. Yeah. And has and 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 you know, charges him to do that. I love it. I, th I think it's hilarious. It's like you know they're 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 doing what Triple H is trying to do in NXT. Yeah, and it's like because he didn't give NXT the resources or the freedom to do really what they probably should have been doing, which is like you know, you know basically what AEW was doing. Yeah, uh, he he completely shut them down and turned them into NXT 2.0. Yep, which a lot of people like right now. So yeah. I can't really. It's, it is what it is. But it, it, NXT right now is not what it was when 2.0 launched. No, it was not. It's, no. it's different. Yeah, it's it different. Is. And I still think it's inferior to black and gold. But whatever, that's for another day. Uh, before we uh, keep going, Larson, you want to go ahead and pay some bills? Let's do it. All right. This episode of Going In Raw is sponsored by BetterHelp, Steve. Mm. Questions. Two of them for you. Okay. So, first, what would you do if you lived on that famed Kota Ibushi schedule? Oh, wow. And could add an extra hour to your day? Or here's another one. Okay. What about if you could uh, bend the reality of the universe oh, wow. as we know it and give yourself unlimited time? Oh, man. How would you use that unlimited time? I expect five different scenarios. Oh, dude, you know, man, I'll be on. I hate to disappoint you. You know mm. that. But unfortunately for Steve, I'm neither Kota Ibushi nor do I have the ability to manipulate time and space so I can grant myself unlimited time. Like, say, Oppenheimer, for example. So like everyone uh, else, if there's something special or important I want to fit into my schedule, man, I just, I got to make it a priority. Yeah, me too. And I've talked about it extensively before, but in my mid-20s, I was having a lot of trouble prioritizing what was important to me due to severe anxiety. And therapy helped me figure out what mattered to me the most so I can make an effort to put those things first and foremost in my life. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com. Slash raw. Let's talk about Will Ospreay, bro. 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 So, on the latest talk is Jericho. Will uh, Jericho's like, hey, uh, you know, you, you want to you wanna have a feud with uh, Jericho? Oh, oh bro. Bro. Who's that? Is it, it's my tea kettle going off right now. I got to go get my tea kettle. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they call it. Uh, so, uh, Jer he compared AEW's contract offer with the dabby to dabby to ease. He said this, and these transcripts come to us. Via our friends over at Fightful. Main thing was I want to be in the UK. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do this in Steve voice. Main thing was I wanted to be in the UK. I know I'm not going to be exactly comfortable moving to another country. I moved to Japan in 2019 and as much as I loved it, it wasn't home. I entered a new relationship with my new missus who wrestles under the name Alex Windsor. I have a stepson now. She just started school. If you know her story and everything she's been through, the UK scene kind of knows it. But she lost her husband and having to pick herself up from that and having to be a mom, a single mom to losing her husband, it's going to have some tolls on you. So she needs to be around family and friends in her social circle. I couldn't bear the thought of moving her away from all that and having her own uh, on her own again. For me, the main priority was to stay in the UK, but also wanting to up the wrestling because I had done everything in New Japan. I completed it. <laughs> he 100% he, he it. He did. He said the doing... Every time I came to AEW, Tony Khan has given me nothing but trust and respect the moment I came in here. It was the right decision for me at this time. I'm happy here and looking forward to the challenges. It's the right decision. Even in differences of what they were offering and what AEW is offering, AEW is way better. The scheduling, everything about AEW is completely the right option for me. It was always, you can go be a superstar in WWE and famous, but it's not as good of pay and it's not a, uh, as kind of a schedule. I respect everywhere they're, everyone there doing it but it's not for me. You know, man, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, re that's really cool. That's that's like that's like real man stuff. Like it that, is. You know? and, 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 Prioritizing and, your family and, and shit. And it's great that wrestlers have an option yeah. 
to wrestle in the States on, for a large company on cable television. That's not WB mm-hmm. for this reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's the schedule in AEW is, it's, is pretty darn attractive. I would think plus simulating the money that Tony Khan is signing these free agents to. Yeah. Um, which, you know, you'd think on paper, WB would have the advantage in terms of offering these giant contracts to wrestlers. But it seems like in this case, and probably in Okada's case, mm-hmm. uh, Tony Khan had the greater financial offer of these wrestlers. Yeah, you, you, met, you, you add that to the schedule, to the level of creative freedom you seemingly have in AEW. It's, you know, re- regardless if they're wrestling in front of packed houses or if the, the ratings are in the millions, it's in the... For those reasons, it's an attractive place to go. You know, I often said, while Vince was still around, and we would ask, we would be asked, why would anybody, given what they see with Vince McMahon and how he treats people in his company, specifically creatively, why would you want to go to WWE? And my response to that was, nobody thinks, nobody would like to think that they're going to be poorly used. For many wrestlers, I would imagine it might be a bit of a challenge. Let's see if I can go and thrive within this system. Let's see if I can go show, you know, the guy, Vince McMahon, that that is sort of seen as the king of of, of wrestling, Mm -hmm. you know, as as promoter anyways. Um, Let's see if I can take on that challenge and do, you know, at the highest level what, you know, the main eventers there do. Well, in AEW, Tony Khan is automatically offering that to Will Ospreay. Mm -hmm. When you look at what their state is right now, when there's 2,000 people in a venue as opposed to WWE who's bringing in 10,000 in a venue, Mm -hmm. that's a whole other challenge. It's not like, I want to go in there, I want to go join the Golden State Warriors at their peak. It's, I want to go and see if I can make a difference. If I can bring this 3,000 up to 5,000 and maybe collectively we can bring it up to 10,000 at some point. And that's, that's a hell of a challenge right there, but it might be a more satisfying challenge to help continue, you know, because it's not necessarily like building the company from the ground up, but there's still like obviously some growing pains with AEW and to try to help them get over the hump. I think that's a valid challenge that somebody would would view it through that lens. You know, yeah. I'm not going to the biggest place, but I want to go see if I can help make it the biggest place or get to it as big as it can be. Yeah, yeah, totally. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there's there's a variety of challenges going to AEW that as a performer would potentially be intriguing. You mentioned, you know, the, the attendant. You could talk about the ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, they're on the precipice of, of being eligible to get a new TV deal, mm-hmm. you know, and, and if by any measure you as a performer could help the fortunes of the company you work for yeah. or put yourself in a position where you're willing to accept that challenge. Yeah, there's there's I could see why that would be intriguing, you know, um, historically speaking, over the last 30, 40 years, 30 years at least. Seems like a lot of people who get in the world of professional wrestling grew up watching wrestling and and probably wanted to. They see the stage, the platform that is WrestleMania. It's like if you grew up wanting to be a baseball player and you're in your backyard and you're imagining hitting a, a home run in Game 7 of the World Series to win it for your team, you know? And, and WrestleMania is the wrestling analogy, or was sure. for the longest time. Yeah. You know, and now you got another viable company on cable television. Yeah, they may not be packing the state or the uh, arenas uh, every show to the degree that WB's now. They fill up the arenas for the pay per views. Mm-hmm. They filled up Wembley Stadium yeah, last year, and they'll probably get another huge crowd there this year. Mm-hmm. So, is there a disparity? Obviously, WWE's been the name brand of professional wrestling for 40 years. AEW's been around for like five. Mm-hmm, yeah. But considering the inroads AEW's already made in the last five years, there's a disparity there. But it's much closer than any company has been since probably WCW in 1998. And I, dude, I may I maintain this: the fortunes for pro wrestling companies and creative can you know flip on and off. Oh, it ebbs and flows, absolutely. A- absolutely. You look back at WCW and, and WWF back in the day, and you see you know how many times, literally week to week, like their ratings were up, their ratings were down, their ratings were up, their ratings were down, and eventually you know WWE was able to pull away. And WCW kept on fo- shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I don't know how all this lawsuit business is gonna is gonna shake out. It's entirely possible that it shakes up WWE in a major, major uh-huh. way. We yep. saw the reporting the other day from you know uh, uh, John Pollock, uh, Brandon Thurston, and Tim Marshman, yeah, and Tim Marshman. You know, who knows what that's going to mean ultimately for the company? You know, I, I I talked about this before, and I'm not, dude. I'm not saying this at all that this is going to happen. It could be, you know, hell. It could be the lawsuit another opportunity opening up. It could be wanting to spend more time with his family. If Triple H goes away, like for whatever reason, mm-hmm. in any way, shape, mm-hmm. or form, mm-hmm. the creative for WWE could shift like that. Yep. Now, I don't know, could get better. If Brian Gortz goes in there, it could get better. It could get worse. One person could go away somehow, some way, and creative could change. Yeah. AEW could find a formula that works with their current lineup of creative, and it could click yep. just like that. It could. And the tides could turn. Mm-hmm. You saw what happened with the ratings with WCW and, and, and WWF back in the day, and I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying it is not out of the realm of possibility for that to happen. Yeah. Stranger yeah. things have. Stranger things have happened. So, uh, so yeah. Anyways. With with that in mind, let's talk about uh, AEW Big Business. Big! business i think they sold upwards of seven thousand tickets to the that's show that's what i saw as well from uh, i think that's what wrestle ticks had to say yesterday so a good a good crowd there in boston boston aw in boston so of course talk is mercedes monet likely mm-hmm. to make her aw debut tonight mm-hmm. at big business but there's other matches and segments happening on dynamite tonight let's First discuss match. samoa joe versus Wardlow. it's for the aw title you think there's going to be uh, some wonkiness here? There's going to be some interference, I feel there's like. Maybe. Be some wonkiness. Maybe. Yeah, there's maybe be some one wonkiness. Uh, MJF making a return. Majeff. Could be. Also, next bitch. Jay White versus Darby Allen. Darby Allen's about to scale a mountain. He's going to lose this bitch. Yeah, Jay White's going to win this one. He has to. Uh, Willow Nightingale taking on Riho. Feel like Willow Nightingale's going to win this bitch. Could be. Uh, Hook and Chris Jericho versus Gates of Agony. You're like Hook and Chris Jericho are going to win this match. Yep. Hook, yep. if you do what's good for you, run away. Get away from Chris Jericho. Momentum vampire. Uh, and then the new elite, including Kazuchika Okada versus Eddie Kingston, Pentagon, and Pick. That'd be a good match. That'll be a good match. New elite wins that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, Who yeah. eats the pin there? Pentagon. Oh, that's why yeah, he's Penta's, in the match. Penta's going to eat it. That's why he's in the match. Penta's probably going to eat that. All right, you want to answer some questions, yeah? Let's go ahead and answer some questions. Mr. Lee, would you like to look at the television? That's such an obscure reference. I'd be surprised. Well, so people do, yeah, people yeah, do. People there's understand. at least one person. Mr. Lee, would you like to look at the there's, television? There's JFK fans out there. Absolutely. Uh, Sebastian Garcia says, would you rather only be able to respond positively by saying, yeah, or only be able to respond negatively by saying, exactly. No pop. I would think the former, because it's not as... Because if you say... Someone says, uh, how was that cheeseburger you just had? No pop. People are like, what the hell? You want well, a soda with that? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, even worse than that. It's like, okay, to continue your analogy. Okay, would you like some fries with that? Exactly. No pop. People you're, are confused. You're going to get fries because you say exactly. Yeah, but also people don't may not understand no pop what that refers to. If you're in the Midwest, it'll be like, you don't want soda with that? Yeah, exactly. That's what they call soda in the Midwest. So yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd be, yeah. You want fries with that? Yeah. You want fries with that? No, no. I mean, you get obnoxious, but it's clear what you're saying if you just say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no ambiguity to yeah. Uh, let's see here. What is this? Which, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, 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 I get what he's saying. John and Alistair voice. John says, which return of absolute jacktitude was your guys' favorites? To me, the returns of Champa and NXT and Orton recently oh, come yeah. to mind. So dudes who come back. Super jack. Dude, yeah. top tier is Triple H. Oh, yeah. Where he couldn't even put his arms down. His lats were so because huge. Because his lats were just thick. Yeah, he was humongous when he, he came back. He was huge. Champa's a good, a good call, though, when he came back. Um, Remember when Mo- that, like Mox came back and he was Jack, but it was like for one week. Yeah, <laughs> and the next week he went back to normal Mox yeah, body. Yeah, gosh, I'm trying to think who <laughs> else. <laughs> Orton when he came back, and I mean, we even heard that he would he had put on some muscle, but it was shocking. 
I mean, probably, probably like the the most like the one who literally looked like a different human being was Drew McIntyre. Yeah, I know he, he. I mean, he came back from being released and it was years, but like, uh, yeah, he put on like twenty pounds of muscle. Look like he looked like a different enormous. Person. He looked like a different person. Uh, Wayne Scoggins, do you think Rock will destroy Cody musically? Oh yeah, he's doing a new rock show. rock concert. Yeah. Oh, he'll make fun of Cody's mom. I'm really looking forward to that. And 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 Pharaoh. What's his name? Sorry, we don't call him Farrelly. Call him shithead. Call him shithead. Uh, let's see here. Nikki Sturzu says, if Motorhead do go into the WWE Hall of Fame, uh, to what song should they enter? He says his pick is uh, the evolution theme, Line in the Sand. So, like, if do they play? Like, with, like what is, the, I guess the question is, what is their peak Motorhead wrestling song? Oh, I think I guess that's the question. I guess it'd be probably one of uh, Triple H's themes. I mean, Lemmy Lemmy passed away, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. he wouldn't be there for induction, so right. Um, if you, I mean, if it's any Motorhead song, it's Ace of Spades. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it's just wrestling themes, I guess it's got to be. I I think I think Triple H's secondary theme, but uh, the uh, oh, bow down to the game. Yeah, that I always like the other one more. How did the other one go? Time to play the game. Da, Time da, da, da. to play the game. It's all about the game it. and yeah. how you play it. I always thought that one was better. Yeah, that is a really good one. Uh, Griga says, would you have Steve Blackman in the Hall of Fame in the future? He had zero riz back in the day, but yeah. he was such a badass as a lethal weapon in being hardcore champion. Also, uh, you know, in kayfabe, he was simply a fan that hopped the barricade and then somehow mm-hmm. got a contract. Yep. Um... I like Steve Blackman a lot, but you got to draw the line somewhere, man. No, I love. I we were talking about this off camera. Yeah, I love the choices they've been making. Who is it today? The uh, Thunderbolt uh, Patterson. Patterson, right? yeah. Oh my God, yeah. there are some really. And it, the thing about the names that they're that they're bringing up now. I mean, obviously, I don't have to do any research on Muhammad Ali, but um, like uh, Thunderbolt Patterson, I don't really know much about the guy. So now I get to go and do a little bit of research, and that's kind of cool. I mean, hearing that he was he was fighting for for better pay for wrestlers, better working conditions. Yeah, that is awesome. I know that's awesome that he that 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 he's getting the recognition of being a WWE Hall of Famer now. That's so cool. Like the U.S. Express. Yeah, that is uh, who, uh, who, if Triple H, Rock, Gortz, I don't know Heyman, whoever's making these choices, they're killing it. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Yeah. Man. Uh, Luis here says, how does Seth Rollins, exactly, no pop, oh, wow. reign as inaugural champion, rank among inaugural champions? Oh, wow. Wasn't, because uh, Buddy Rogers was the first WWF, right? Mm-hmm. And, but it Briefly. wasn't very long. No, it was pretty brief, and then Bruno beat him. And then Bruno beat him. So, like, I'm going to say Seth is better than Buddy. Seth was better than Finn, but that's because Finn got hurt as the first universal champion. Who was technically the first WCW world champion? Wasn't it fl- probably Flair? Probably. Because there was that weird crossover time when they were NWA affiliated and they were not NWA affiliated. Yeah. And I feel like Flair was like the, the bridge there. Yeah. I kind of feel like it was him. Probably. But I don't know. It's, it's a, that's, a murky, that's a murky situation. I never really got a firm grasp on it. Um, what other... Oh yeah, Finn. Yeah, Finn's was lousy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because he got hurt. You know, he got hurt during the match. So. Yeah. So it's better than Finn's. I mean, Seth was also the first NXT champion. I don't think that was very long, though. No, it wasn't. It was a hundred something days. Didn't, who took it off? Biggie. Mm-hmm. Um. The, what about the inaugural? I mean, who? Let me ask this: Who do you think's run has been better, Seth's or Rhea's? Because Rhea was the inaugural women's world champion. Yeah. I feel like Seth's technically has been better, but for some reason Rhea's made more of an impact. Yeah, it's interesting in terms of Rhea's actual title feuds. Not very great. Not really, but in terms of her prominence on the show it, and her character development, it's risen a ton. You know, so yeah, it's interesting how they approach Rhea's title reign. It's not in the same sense as they have a lot of traditional ones. Yeah. Right. Which is just feud, 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 feud. Uh, Jesse Helsius says, as a Clevelander, I'm pumped for SummerSlam. Cool. Which of these Cleveland wrestling moments had the biggest impact? The first tag team ladder match at No Mercy, the Raw slash Nitro simulcast, 
or Cody's last AEW match. Oh, it's the Raw Nitro simulcast. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. I forgot that that was even in Cleveland. Well, the Raw version of it was. Yeah. Nitro was on a beach somewhere, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It was at Panama City. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like spring break the last time. It was, was I know, I know. I'm not sure. That's so weird. Uh, another thing you should add to that happened in Cleveland. That's where uh, CM Punk walked out. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carson Thrasher says, this is a question for Larson. No offense. No pop for Steve. No pop. You're awesome as well. Cool. Carson's was no band or musician. Uh, uh, led you wanted to start playing guitar. Oh, it was grunge. It was grunge era stuff. It was Nirvana. It was Pearl Jam. That's there how I go. learned to play guitar. There you go. W.S. Fletcher, bigger power couple, Trick and Lash Legend. Do you see them suck face last night Mm -hmm. on TV? Mm -hmm. Oh, hot. Mm -hmm. Hot, Larson. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or Stephanie and Paul. I don't know about Stephanie these days, man. Yeah. (laughs) Persona non grata. I'm going to say Trick and Lash. They're the future, man. They're the future. Exactly. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to agree. Chris Stanton, which wrestler in the modern era do you think has spent more days as a champion than not? Could be any title or promotion. Wait, what? Sorry. Which wrestler in the modern era do you think has spent more days as a champion than not? For example, do you Hmm. think Okada spent more time with the title belt around his waist than not? Probably. I mean, I feel like this is like we're just guessing something that has a factual basis. Yeah, I know. I know. We need to do some research to get some actual facts involved here, but yeah. Uh, I mean, clearly this version of Roman Reigns, maybe Roman, maybe Reigns. Roman period. Cause even when he didn't have a world title, he was us champions, tag champ. He was yeah. intercontinental, intercontinental champ. champ. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Roman, maybe Could be Roman. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bulldog says, what do you guys think of the hall of fame class this year? We already talked about that. Yeah. Also asked, are we going to do dark side reviews again? It would be cool. It's just trying to shoehorn that into our schedule. It's kind yeah, of difficult. Yeah, I have the, the Earthquake one on my DVR I got to watch. Yeah, I got to watch both that one and the Buff Bag The one. Buff one was on I, last night, right? I know that we, like, meant to. Uh, it's just we have, like, a really set schedule of things that we do. Mm-hmm. So adding that other thing to our schedule, just, like, not easy. And we haven't really talked about how we'd be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's not to say it won't happen. Uh, Time War here says, what one reveal in wrestling kayfabe would you be re- have replaced with Al Pacino nonchalantly revealing it like the Oscars? Oh, uh, it'd like, be uh, air I, throwing. S- I see here Finn Balor going to Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I'd want him to be there when uh, when there's like, uh, my eyes see a twin Eric Rowan. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs> You got this guy over here. It looks like Eric Rowan, but that's actually Eric Rowan there. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> that was my favorite part of that is when you watch it back and everybody starts rising up and the music pops in. You hear Al Pacino. It's already cut to the crowd. You hear Al Pacino very quietly say, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you just announced the winner is what happened. Yeah, I know. It's pretty funny. <laughs> what happened? Uh. <laughs> you a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, old people are funny uh, Doc Henslow says since y'all hate airplanes I don't hate airplanes I don't like to travel it's different oh I hate airplanes Steve doesn't I don't, like airplanes I've, I, I've just turned into the guy that doesn't like to I don't like to fly I used to be fine with it no I don't yeah like I'm still fine flying I just don't like traveling very much uh, what are three places in the world that you wish would host Wrestlemania so you could attend the Orangevale Community Center yeah uh, uh, Hughes Stadium and the campus of Sacramento City College. That's good. Golden One Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Golden One Center. Discovery Park. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Um, the football field out at Cordova uh, High School. Good. Uh, uh, Sutter Health Park where the River Cats play. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Castle Roble High School. Bella Vista High School. <laughs> yeah. So every, what place, every place local. Oh man! Uh, oh, oh, we could drive the Bay Area, but we wouldn't. We wouldn't hey, travel to it. I had a lovely time on the train going to San Jose. Yeah, for thirty-one. Yeah, that was that was honestly an awesome WrestleMania. And experience. you almost didn't go. I know I didn't. Aren't you happy I convinced you to go? No, it was more Hilton. White Ninja says, uh, "How do you guys feel about the Punk Monet type of debut? Yeah, where they all where they all but say the person's going to show up at the show. Oh, I like it." If you could do it, 
do it because yeah. I think it's cool as shit. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, AEW is getting like at least double the house they usually get mm-hmm. for for big business, so mm-hmm. it's paying dividends. So I like it. Yeah. Um. Blake Whitehouse, what's your guys' reaction to NXT introducing low blow DQs to the women's division? Apparently, uh, I think Gigi lost in her match against Ariana Grace because she hit a low blow after Ariana hit Gigi with a low blow. And the ref didn't see it. I am ill-equipped to talk about what that would feel like. I mean, I feel like any sort of strike against sensitive region would probably be enough to take a person out. To warrant a, and therefore warrant a disqualification. But I've never been able to quantum leap into, you know, because I don't even know how the quantum leap situation works. So I don't know. I don't know. And look, it's a sensitive region. Yeah. You know, you get hit there and it might it might take you down. Uh, I, yeah, no. I, and I think it's, it's, a, it's an interesting and creative way to book a match. Absolutely, yeah. Something different. I think it is it's something different. different. You don't I see that very often. That. You've, I have seen the no sell on the indie circuit. I have seen that too. With that. So, you know, the, I feel like the wrestling industry needs to come together and sort of get on the same page as to female genitalia. You know, are you going to treat that in the same manner as male genitalia as when it, it comes as it relates to, to low blows? Yeah. Yeah. How effective the strike to that area is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make this as awkward as possible. Uh, You're doing a good job of it. Awesome. Carson Gillis has a proposition. My dad has sweets to Kings games. If he allowed me to have it for a game, could we all have a friendo night out? It could be you two, me, and another 22 friendos. (laughs) I suspect it would just be us two and Carson. That'd be fucking cool, though. That would be pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, I've not been to a Kings game at Golden 1 yet. Oh, wow. Have not. That's surprising. That's surprising. I wish I had gone last night because we would have seen the... Uh, I know! Thanasis play. I think those tickets were pretty expensive, they though, were. because I Giannis is there. I did. Or I because the Thanasis. Thanasis I don't know. was there, I know. I know. We whooped him, too. Oh, my I know. God. I know. I think we had lost, like, 40 in a row to the Milwaukee Bucks. It was uh, since 2016. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for the show today. What's that? We got cues. We got cues. We got to wrap that. it up. There's we got no cues. one else in this room other got, than us. It's Hilton. He's saying we can do it. He's we got not cues. here. Do wrap it up.